Hi again, it's Dan. Um, jumping ahead of myself a little bit uh, with Final Cut today. I will be going through uh, Final Cut from the beginning, explaining to you just the basics, like the timeline, the browser, and and this and all the various you know relevant basics to get you started for the for the newbies. But uh, for those who already know all this stuff and have been asking me this week about the cloning effect that I've been mucking about with. Um, I was just going to show those people that asked how I do this. I'm not sure if it's the correct way or maybe people are using Chroma Key to do this or something. Um, I don't know, but I, I didn't know how to do it, so I sort of mucked around and figured out a way myself. So I, I'm guessing this is a way everybody does it. Seems logical. But I'll show you how I do it. Um, first thing, uh, if you want to clone yourself, set up your camera wherever you set it up and make sure that camera does not move an inch or this effect is really going to be moot and make sure that in each shot you don't overlap yourself so sort of plan out beforehand because um, what we're going to do later is crop this image so we need to make sure that both me's are not touching each other in the same image so before you uh, when you're planning your shot out you would you'd make sure that you remembered where you were standing in the shot. So, I mean, ideally, you'd, if you want to do a test, just uh, do what I did the first time, which is cut right down the middle. So, have one clone way to the the right side of the screen and uh, the other one on the left, just, just for your test. Um, yeah, uh, also make sure that, the, that you shoot both your shots in the same, especially if there's light coming in the window or something and the sun is changing position shoot them in the same lighting so do them do them in in the same sort of 10 minute space or you, you don't want that light changing or you're going to have to mess around with your brightness and contrast and it gets ugly so uh to avoid all that shoot both of those sequences very quickly after each other uh, enough of that um you've got your two you've got your two different takes and you want to just drag them into your main timeline here. Now I'll quickly explain about the the timeline. You've got your video track and your audio tracks there. Now um, selected in yellow, you can select and deselect them, are uh, the target for where you're dragging your clip. So you'll see what I mean there. I'll, I'll drag this clip in and uh, as you can see that comes up with options of, of edits that you can make. We want to just insert that you can see that's been inserted there and if that had sound which it doesn't I've deleted the sound for the, just to make it less confusing um, the sound would just put itself in there where the where it's been selected in yellow um, we we're going to want to superimpose I'll just drag that other clip the other clip in uh, we're going to want to superimpose eventually this image over this image um, which to do that we're going to need another video track now all we do to create another video track is if you've if you've it's a right click if you've got a right click button mouse if you're like me and you've still got the classic apple mouse with one button we uh, just hold down the control key and we get that contextual menu thingy and then click down and you'll see a little menu come up that says add track so we'll add track then we've we see that we've got um, video 2 and uh, with that change the target track by just uh, clicking on it. It's very simple. Alright, um, next thing we want to do is we've got we've got this clip now. Uh, if we just s simply drag that up here, we superimpose it over there, we can see that that does absolutely nothing because that's just overlapping. So we want to actually cut this clip, we want to crop it right about there somewhere so that we can actually see that clip as well and how we go about cropping that is just double click on the clip and we see that comes up in our canvas view here and uh, we'll go to the motion tab in the motion tab there's lots of things we can do we won't get into all of those but uh, crop is here and it's just a matter of either numerically typing in a number you can see the changes on the right here and um, or dragging that slider if you want to do that and you can see it just you can see where you're cropping on the on the main screen 
Um, we want to crop from the right to the left and get rid of the right part. So we're going to drag this slider here to the right. You can see as that's happening we're getting that the croppage is there. Alright, so um, I think about 70 should do us which is about, just cuts off my arm there, so that's perfect. You can see still that line, that faint line, because I was dumb enough in this instance to uh, shoot this this image a bit later in the day. And uh, you can see even that that sort of 15 minutes between shooting, the, the light had changed, which really shot me in the foot in this case. I wouldn't be that stupid to do that again. Anyway, now we've cropped this image. Um, and it's been superimposed. Uh, we want to render. You can see that red line there indicates that we haven't rendered, so we can't actually watch this. We try and watch this and it will just say unrendered. So we don't want that. Uh, we want to render that so we can we can test to see how this is looking. So to do that, we're going up to the Sequence tab and Render All. And uh, just wait for that to render. I'll just skip ahead now to when this is rendered because my computer is quite slow. All right, that's uh, that's rendered now. We can watch the result of what we've just done in that short time. I told myself to shut up or whatever, and end of clip. Not the best clip, but you know, it was good enough for what it was. It only took me a short amount of time. To do okay. Um, that was that. Uh. You can sort of still see this line here if you're really finicky about that. Just double click on that clip and go to your effects area uh, under video filters. Probably quick time will do. Uh, brightness and contrast. Click on that. That will add itself. And anytime you've added a, an effect through the effects tab, uh, it'll appear in filters here. This is where it's all controlled under your filters tab in your slug. I think I called that a canvas before. This is your canvas view. That they call a slug, I don't know why. Um, anyway, here you can, you've got, I've got gamma correction, all sorts of stuff in here, but um, brightness and contrast, you you know, you can alter numerically of this, the same way as, as we talked about earlier. And you'll see that that will change accordingly. So you can just, you can just muck with that until it's, until it's no longer overlapping and it just looks like one shot is the goal. Anyway, um, whatever you've understood of this, it's really really the concept I'm getting through and uh, so that you know how it's done. And like I said, newbies just uh, just disregard this video. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start right from the, the beginning with Final Cut for I know a few of you have messaged me uh, saying that you're just beginning Final Cut and uh, you're going right from scratch, you don't even know the very very basics like importing files and stuff and I'll I'll take it through like from right from babies, ba baby kind of steps and um, yeah I apologize for the uh, incoherency of these they're not really proper tutorial videos but then it's not like I'm getting paid for this so put up with it <laughs> um, yeah I'm doing my best here alright <laughs> Alright, I'll catch you guys later, and uh, and I'll, I'll try and get onto those other Final Cuts uh, series, the proper one, in the week. Cheers.